now broadcasting the Dr. Nilda Business Foresight Show, positioning your business with strategies for an extraordinary future. Dr. Nilda features expert guests from diverse backgrounds to bring you their stories and strategies that have helped them reach their success. The diversity in industries gives you that panoramic view from an array of industries. They are innovators, thought leaders, trendsetters, and strategists. Here, Dr. Nilda reveals strategies that will position you to be on the cutting edge and be able to do what you love with the people you like, making the profits you want to live the lifestyle that you have dreamed of. And now, here's your host, Dr. Nilda Perez. Hello, and welcome to the Dr. Nilda Foresight Strategies Show. Today, we have with us a very awesome guest. Her name is Alexandra Willington. She is an author, and I will give you her bio in a few minutes. Say hello. Hi. Hi, Dr. Nilda. Thank you. And we also, I also have with me my co-host, Rachel. And uh, say hello, Rachel. And hello. So we will now dive into Alexandra Whittington's uh, bio. Alexandra Whittington is a futurist, an educator, a writer, and a researcher. She has been recognized for one of the world's top, top female futurists. She is a foresight director at Fast Future. She has also co-authored two books, several book chapters and dozens of articles and publications such as Financial Times and Lawyer Magazine. Awesome. Alex also is also a published, she's also published academically and she is also an adjunct lecturer at the University of Houston since 2009. She is on Future Board at the Lifeboat Foundation, and she occasionally is a contributor on the Lifeboat blog. Alex has a BA in Anthropology, and she has her BS in Future Study. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How Thank are you, you Alex? I'm welcome. fine. Thank you so much. So I want you to begin to tell me your trajectory. Like, how did you begin on this journey with futures because your background is anthropology and I know anthropology is a lot of looking into the past. So explain to me how you went from that past to the future. Yeah, that's true. Um, I do have a great interest in the past and um, I actually came to future studies as it was called when I studied it um, through my anthropology studies. Uh, I, I'm kind of unusual, I think, in the sense that I came to future studies through a very academic route. A lot of people find out about future studies once they've already entered a profession. Um, I actually found it through taking a college course called Study of the Future, um, a class that I later ended up teaching myself once I had already gotten the master's degree and um, been a practicing futurist for a while. Awesome. So... Um, you go from studying from your, your interest in the past to jumping is a, a leap. I think it's a high leap. <laughs> it's a catapult to the future. Um, tell me a little bit about that middle. Yeah. What, well, I think, what does that look like? Well, I think what it's all about, um, as an anthropologist, I'm very interested in um, the human experience as, well, just another species trying to survive on this planet, essentially. So I guess I look at the future as, the conditions to which we will have to adapt as a species. And so that's my, my interest and my perspective as a futurist is how are our technologies, our social systems, um, our various forms of economic and political systems um, helping us adapt or not to the future and continue to populate the planet. Okay. Well, you're also uh, the inspiration and thinking behind this newest book, the, what is it? Fast Future Publishing. Yeah. Beyond Genuine Stupidity, <laughs> 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 Ensuring AI Serves Humanity and the Future Reinvented. Explain that. Yes, yes. Those are actually two books. Those are oh. two newest books at Fast Future, uh, Beyond Genuine Stupidity and the Future Reinvented. The first one, like the play on words we have there in the title obviously relates to artificial intelligence, AI being artificial intelligence. Uh, we basically put together a collection of chapters that talks about how artificial intelligence is changing education, uh, families, retirement, work, life, uh, pretty much you name it. We, we looked at different futures 
for different parts of life and how they could evolve based on the growth and development of artificial intelligence. Uh, so that is, it's a great sort of um, layperson exposure to the idea of artificial intelligence and how it might progress into the future. Uh, we aren't computer scientists, we're futurists, all of us, the authors of that book. So we take this big picture view of how technology is changing things and where we might be in like 10 or 15 years. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So how, how might artificial intelligence um, impact women mm -hmm. in, in their future? And that's one of the areas I've been looking at. Uh, actually, I'm glad you asked me about that. Um, in one of our upcoming books, I've written a couple of chapters specifically related to AI and women. Um, so, and Fast Future has very generously let me uh, explore my different ideas and theories about where we might be going in the future. So one of them, um, Rachel, is about AI as a sort of technological revolution. And so uh, with my anthropology framework and thinking style, I started wondering where we might be going in terms of the direction of um, the future of families and the future of women. And I, looking back at history, I observed well, the agricultural revolution introduced these very large families, right? Women had lots of children. Right. Because they had to have, you know, the resources, the, the family size, someone to pass the land to, someone to help them work the land, right? So um, that then changed as we moved into the industrial revolution, which is when the nuclear family started taking shape. People were living in cities. You saw the women having fewer children, people working outside the home and increasingly the woman working outside the home. So my question here is, now that we're face-to-face um, -face with this new technology revolution, artificial intelligence, how might that change the family structure and the role of men and women in society? And I don't know, but that's just the thinking right. pattern that futurists take when we're trying to extrapolate different futures. Right, it, AI is a very, uh, it's a very male-dominated, uh, field. So how is that for women? Um, even though women have been working for quite some time, the artificial intelligence technology, um, actually the biggest, right now, the biggest draw is to try to get young girls and try to get uh, young, you know, young girls interested in those STEM, uh, mm -hmm. and those STEM fields because there aren't a lot of women in engineering, in math, in, mm -hmm. in science. They're, they're just on tech, technology. So how, what is being done from a futurist perspective towards that end? Well, I think that by exposing regular people to futurist thinking, more can be done about it. I'm not really sure what's being done other than encouraging women to pay attention to these technologies, educate themselves on it, get their daughters up to speed on it, bring their organizations up to speed, and recognize the benefits as well as the possible pitfalls of these powerful technologies. Okay, so so here is the thing. So now you 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 realize this is this is my mission. My mission is to get the average person, and, and I and I use that word very carefully because nobody's really average, um, but to get people who are business uh, business owners and people who are doing very notable things in life, trying to get them. To understand, I always feel what one of one of my models is if I could just open their their minds a jar just a little bit, so that they could it, just to pique their interest. If they look a little further, they they would be more interested. Now, at that with that said, these are the women that are also go, uh, also they're the leaders of their homes. They're their mothers. They have children, and as they're learning a lot of this stuff, they're also depositing a lot of this information to their children. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. So I think this is great. So it's, it's really about educating the general public about futures and what direction that's going. Is that correct? I agree with that. And also educating about technology and how it's not just this benign, naturally occurring thing. It's actually designed with human intention. So when we, for example, choose that to give an AI a gender and say this is a female AI, a personal assistant that speaks to you with a woman's voice, for example, named Alexa or Siri or whatever the feminized name might be. Um, there's a new uh, robotic device they're using in Walmart. It's a floor cleaner. 
floor cleaning robot, but they gave it a name, Emma. It's a woman's name. I mean, it's not to say that Walmart is sexist or that you know AI designers are, are purposely trying to um, per design machines that that carry women's names and therefore personas. Right. But it, it, there, it is a fact that these things are going on and they're not really being questioned and explored as much as I think we could if okay. we want to make sure the technology retains the values that we want to retain in our society. Okay. So, uh, so what is actually being done to be able to train women or to be able to, to, to take this mission out in the world? What, from your perspective and as, you know, as a futurist, uh -huh. what are you guys doing on your end or what are you doing on your end to be able to, to, you know, preach this gospel of futures? Yeah, well, I would definitely reiterate that we do that at Fast Future through our publishing. You know, of course, through my teaching, I'm always working with students and exposing new people to future studies and, and futurism. Uh, but I think there, there's a lot of value in the content that we put out on the, in our book and even on, in our newsletters and um, on our website, which help people envision different futures about what it looks like when you work side by side with a robot, for example, and how do gender or other personal issues come into play. Uh, those stories can really help people relate to the trajectories in a more personal way and, and maybe come up with some of their own ideas. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, tell me a little bit about Fast Futures Publishing. What exactly is it? What do you publish? Is it just books? Is it articles? Is it all of the above? Tell me a little bit about that. It's basically all of the above. Uh, we publish books authored by our own staff and also authored by some of the world's best futurists, actually. Um, our, one of our earlier books, The Future of Business, has something like 62 contributors. So we're not just trying to push the content, we're also always looking for great contributors and people who want to write and think about the future with us to contribute a chapter or short story. Um, we're working on several collaborative books where people have submitted short stories about the future uh, in their different areas. You can probably relate to this. You know, We've got right. people from different industries coming in to talk to us about what they think the future might be. And um, so putting those ideas together is really our purpose, you know, putting, bringing people together to, to think, write, talk about the future. Of course, we do the presentations and the workshops and all of that consulting as well. But um, right now we're really all about the, the writing. Okay. The message. Okay. So, and so when these publications go out, are they, uh, how are they being promoted? Uh, and this was, this would be like Rachel's field because she's the marketer. <laughs> Uh, are they being promoted and are they being marketed to the general public or are they being marketed to future, other futurists? Uh, I would say both, but we definitely write to the general audience. We don't expect our readers to know anything about scenarios or what the major trends are. We spell all of that out because we are researchers at heart, right? We're all researchers at, right. at the future. You know, as a futurist, I mean, it's, the main part of your job is just keeping up and knowing what's going on and understanding these big complex topics and problems and stuff. So yeah, we, we're researchers and so we're constantly just getting that information out there through our stories, through our articles. And uh, yeah, we spread the word through social media. I'm sure Rachel can relate, you know, just all the same kind of avenues. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's funny because I think back <clears throat> when I started college, <laughs> dating myself here in the 80s, I started college and uh, I remember at that time you had to actually go to a library. And you sit in the library and you had to, if you wanted to check out a book and somebody else had it, you had to wait till they were done with it and hope that you were the next person. Sometimes it was a, a line of people for that specific book or, you know, cause they would have maybe like three of the books. I know, and so, you know, where were you on that line? And I think of how far we've come with AI uh -huh. and all of the progress that we've made that I can basically sit in, you know, sometimes I'll have an idea at 11 o'clock at night or two in the morning and I'm like, let me get online and see. I can't even imagine how this futures could have even, I don't know how it would even operate the way that we used to do it before because we would all be fighting for the same books. Yeah. Is, <laughs> or be, yeah. we have to write our own. Um, to, yeah, so I think, I think right now and I think back at how far that has come and how, how much better we're doing today mm -hmm. as a result of that of the, you know, the feasibility of having artificial intelligence. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And even, you know, just since you asked, you know, what we're doing about it, well, what is, there's various ways technology is helping us. And I see this with my students a lot. It seems like 
social media has really empowered people to um, share new stories a lot, you know, a lot of um, breakthroughs and whatnot. So I, I think that the advent of social media has helped us have futures in our dialogue on a day-to-day -day basis more often because we do tend to go on Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever and you'll see, even if you're not a futurist, you might see something cool that's changing in technologies or something that you might like or share. And I think it, so it, it's kind of elevated it into the day-to-day -day conversation. I think. Okay. Yes, and I think, I, I think personally social media has been able to um, assist all of us in, in, in uh, sharing that. Which is, I think which is yeah, beautiful. God said in so many ways, right? Yes. Well, yeah, because you could reach, you know, a, a larger audience that way, you know, and and was the beauty of social media is that this is kind of like how the millennials and and the younger generation are really. Th this is how they speak. They this, they yeah. they understand this language. They have it on their phones, yeah. you know. So it's accessible to them. Um, it's it's available to them at their fingertips. So. Placing it on all these platforms is, is a beautiful thing. <laughs> so Alexandria, uh, so what are your upcoming books for, for Fast Futures? Yeah, so um, the next book that I think is coming out, well, I'll give you a, a preview of some coming out a little further down the line because uh, those are the women in AI chapters. Yay! One of the oh, okay. doctors I was mentioning on this show. Uh, it, so the name of the book is called Unleashing Human Potential, The Future of AI in Business. So, uh, since we were speaking about that, this is totally focused on AI. And this is another one of the books that we really enjoy doing because we have so many guest contributors. It's actually, we're not the key authors, we're the editors of this book. And we've got a ton of people from the futurist industry and outside the industry who have written about their experience and then their speculations about where we're going with AI. So um, my chapters in that book touch on various things like um, a woman's life. We were talking about how AI can affect women. Uh, me and some co-authors um, who are also women, you should know Fast Future, we're all a female research team there actually. Um, okay. We wrote a chapter about what a woman's life could be like from childhood to the elder years, assisted by AI in different ways. Different things from being a little girl that uh, gets assistance from an AI from maybe a self-driving car taking her home after school to oh. a teenager and a college student using an AI tutor. Um, a woman who's working in her profession um, adopting, you know, a cobot to sit with her and help her as her assistant. And then that cobot would actually follow you home into your retirement years and then take care of you as you age in, in your home. Uh, we, so, wow. so by great. any chance in the future, do you have a, an AI in the works that is going to talk about how to, you know, remove the stress level of a woman's life? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what so we give your days off and actually do the work for you <laughs> sort of like a clone <laughs> well you know to go back to my um historical analogies um you know think back in women's history and the history of women's um liberation we know right. for a fact that in the 50s and 60s the uh, invention of household appliances did a lot to liberate women Right, we were freed up for out from hours and hours of work from the washing machine, True. the dishwasher, True. the microwave, all right. those things. So maybe there's some um, domestic applications, and I see them happening. You've got robotic vacuums, you've got the robotic um, caring robot that can be in your home, the little robot dog. Maybe these in-home robots will do uh, another wave of, uh, you know, independence for women in the home, away from the work of the home that we know we're still stuck doing despite all these years of equality, women still do more work at home, more work raising kids, in addition to their jobs these days. Um, so um, that's another way of looking at it. Maybe these machines are going to bring us another wave of um, I, I, I think a portion of that though is, is us not being able to cut some of that cord as women. You know, we, we, we have to have hands on when it comes to our children and, and doing mm -hmm. things at home. Mm -hmm. You know, some of it is just control. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest yeah. with you. So I don't know yeah. if we'll, I mean, I think we'll probably incorporate some artificial intelligence, but I don't know if we'll let that, we'll let it go completely. <laughs> completely, <laughs> right. No, not, not yeah. a woman. Yeah. A man could just yeah. like totally disconnect with no yeah. problem. I've seen it, you know, know. And, and they're okay with it. They, what they call the nothing box, but women right. just constantly have to have their hands and mm -hmm. their ideas, their thoughts in everything, mm -hmm. <laughs> which right. is, a, it's, 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 I guess, human nature, but, you know. 
but let's see what the future holds. Yeah, yeah. Well, if it becomes a tool for that to make that control less stressful, more viable, um, and, and at the same time, advance gender equality, I think that's mm -hmm. a really good thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, uh, 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 one last question. How do people get a hold of these articles and how do they get you know, a hold of these latest and greatest uh, information? Because this information, I think, is a lot of it is hot off the press. Mm -hmm. How do people, it, it, not just futurists, but the lay people, how do they get a hold of this information? Well, to find our books, of course, that's futurepublishing.com. We also have a blog and a newsletter. Um, and then if you're interested in finding the information, not stuff that we're writing, but where we're reading and getting these kinds of signals about the future, I mean, we look across all of the future social media um, as well as all these futurist websites. We do research from everything from blogs to YouTube to science journals. Um, mm -hmm. We're always looking for new signals of change, and that's part of our job is to monitor that. Right. And so with that said, you also have articles that you publish from that information that you research, right? Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. We've published the books, which are available on fastfuture.com. We also sell on Amazon. Um, and if you, if you look across um, our social media, it's probably the best way to see the different publications right now. Fast Future is a, a UK based company. So okay. they're mostly in uh, British publications. But uh -huh. the ones that you mentioned at the top of your show, we were in the Financial Times, we tend to appear in the um, IT Pro portal. Um, it, it, there's such a range of publications that we get asked to contribute to. It's nice. Um, but they, they really seem to enjoy our future's angle on work issues, life issues, and whatnot. Okay. okay. Fantastic. Um, yeah, because again, I, I want people to be able to research things in there. Not maybe not research, but read things about mm -hmm. their industry, the mm -hmm. direction that it's going. Mm -hmm. AI is going to be very, very much a part of our everyday life. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to be using artificial intelligence, uh, augmented realities in everything. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I don't even think we're going to have a flat screen TV. I, you know, that, that's not, we're going to have 3D TVs uh -huh. and they're just going to come from that. Yeah, I just have this vision of, and, uh, and again, that research is there. The research is there. The information is there. The technology is there to give us all of this. So our uh, realities, and I don't think very far away, between the next five to 15 years, our reality is going to be very different and very, very tech savvy. So people that are in business really need to understand this. People that are looking into their you know, careers or, or even a career change really have to look into this because it's really important mm -hmm. so uh you know again so i i look forward to them be able to to read a lot of this information and to be able to update themselves yeah. you know and educate themselves on what's available and where do they you know where do they go from here make yeah. sense yeah right. i do definitely and i think educating yourself on it is one of the greatest ways to feel more control and influence over it because i have had Several people from students to um, journalists ask me, is it scary? Is this, isn't this frightening AI? And I think, you know, we need to maintain our sense of control over the technologies that we create and, and we, because we do control them. I right, think. right. Even if that's an idea and how do they bring that idea to like a, a hackathon or a think tank that they could actually yeah. build on it. So, uh -huh. I mean, we're using it, so we may as well contribute to it, right? Definitely. Yeah. Makes sense. And getting more women, more women. We need more women. <laughs> more women in the, in the STEM areas, more women in futuring, more women that, because, you know, those numbers are growing. There are going to be more women. So we may as well get into these fields and be able to be, be contributors. Maybe not dominate, but at least be, be very strong contributors mm -hmm. of this change, right? Yeah. Sounds good. So, Rachel, do you have any last questions? Uh, no, I do not. This was, it was very informative and I want to thank you for all that information. I'm, I'm just, I'm still like stuck on the whole, uh, how AI is going to replace some of our, some of our duties. Our as duties. <laughs> I will absolutely welcome that. I have quite I, a few on the list for the, or anything you can create mm -hmm. at artificial that's good. Anything that's going to take my stress away. Yes. One less <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I just purchased my first Alexa. Oh. So, I'm very excited. Yes, oh. just purchased that. So, <laughs> let's see. Let's see where it goes yeah. from here, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Try it. Yeah, <laughs> right. 
So Alexander, I would love uh, for you to come back uh, with any, if you have anything that's cutting edge or that's, that's going to educate mm -hmm. our audience, please, please, please feel free to reach out to us and let us know and we're going to get you yes. on the program because I think uh, people want to hear more. People need to hear more. You know, this is, this is you know, what used to be at one time, the world's fair that would come. I was like, what, every 10 years? Mm -hmm. We're actually living that today. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's constantly hot off the press. There's constantly, you know, researchers like us who are, are looking at things, are looking at trends, are looking at scenarios, are looking at ways to change. And, and I just want to get the information in everybody's hand as yeah. much as possible. Wonderful. I think it's a great mission. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. I know you. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, thank you. This is the segment of Foresight Strategies show. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week where I will be bringing another really fabulous futurist. I have to tell you all of these futurists are absolutely amazing. And the idea is that you will be able to connect to any of these industries and be able to, whether you connect to it because it's a female or because it's the industry, whatever the reason is, I want you to really pay, like, pay close attention to what this means for you. Okay. All right, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Foresight Strategy Show. You can hear host Dr. Nilda, co-host Rachel with feature guests every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live or anytime on demand. Visit www.drnildaperez.com forward slash show. For more information, sign up to our Foresight Strategies Insider Newsletter, a $10 value for free at www.drnildaperez.com forward slash newsletter.